Um, Rafael uh, Pisano is uh, he, he's Italian originally, but he's now got a he's a full professor of physics and history of physics, and uh, and as it applies to education, which is very important, uh, at the uh, University of Lille, uh, Lille Three. These are I don't know I'm going to go on to explain those, but anyway, in France. So it's in northern the northern part of France. Uh, very cool, and uh, so he's a big deal. In my opinion, he's one of the best historians of, of science, historians of physics uh, today. I mean, he's just the quality of his work and the depth of the research and everything is just fantastic. So, so here he is to uh, enlighten us, okay? Okay, good evening. Thank you very much for the invitation, Terry. Thank you very much for this nice place. I apologize for my English. I'm uh, Italian, work in France, uh, so... <laughs> and, um, okay, we can have this little talk about uh, the breaking of paradigm. Uh, ev evidently, though, if we want to talk about so many centuries uh, uh, it's difficult to organize um, a, a path uh, and go deeply in the some um, aspect of the science, of the relationship between physics and mathematics, and so on, and so on. Uh, but um, I tried to to do the same, this little path, uh, and going inside. Uh, to the science uh, to understand uh, um, the relationship between uh, physics and mathematics in the theory and try to understand what the kind of objects we have when we have in a, a physical objects, mathematical objects, uh, what kind of the relationship is exist uh, in between. So we will we, we'll have this little talk between uh, uh, Newton, and we will talk about the Newton science and the Newton science in the history of science. So, a paradigm of a mechanical science, the alternative mechanics proposed by Lazar Carnot, father, um, Sadi's father, and we will focus on this. Uh, publication. It's only one publication that he did in a few few years. Uh, practically uh, something that nowadays we consider a genius. Okay, uh, just to understand what I want to say when I talk about uh, the, the relationship between physics and mathematics. For example, here you can see uh, a design proposed by Leonardo da Vinci. And he already understood that if I move the cannon in different position and taking account the angle of the cannon, I can uh, have different distance. And this was very important for, for the people that I would like to do, would like to do the work. So it was important to measure that distance before I arrived to the fortification. And he tried and described mathematically what he said later. And uh, so my question is, what is the physical and mathematical object here or here? And what is the, the kind of the relationship between um, these uh, objects? Of course, Leonardo da Vinci was an important and very uh, genius, uh, but at that time, mathematics was not... Uh, um, in a, the, the level of mathematics was not a, a great level to understand here. We have to talk about uh, second equations, second order equations, so on. Here you, you have, for example, what Sadi Carnot, what nowadays in the physics books we read and we say uh, Sadi Carnot cycle. But in effect, Sadi Carnot uh, did this kind of a cycle with the, uh, uh, with the cylinders, geometrical point of view. And only later, uh, Cléperon uh, is a friend, uh, 
uh, try it in an analytical and mathematical explanation what is said just by uh, cylinders. So the question again is, what is the relationship between physics and mathematics and where are the objects, physics and mathematics, here or here? By the way, this is a science and this is a science. So this is uh, the little talk I would like to do with you and uh, we will talk about what were what the kind of science we have before the birth of thermodynamics by, by Sadiq Carnot? What the kind of science? Is a path, Sadiq Carnot thermodynamics like uh, Lavoisier chemistry, is really a revolution, intellectual revolution, or is a revolution because the physical mathematical object change? And after we will talk uh, about the relationship between uh, uh, the father and son um, and this general project to organize um, and to study uh, general the machine en général. Machine en général means uh, machine, uh, try to find efficiency of a machine in any kind of machine, any kind of uh, uh, working substance. So, uh, paralleling to the science, to foundation, to mathematics, to physics, to geometry, we have a kind of a science. We can consider science but because uh, we can consider an effort uh, by scholars in some way to, study, to try to understand something. But uh, uh, the perpetual motion was, was, was until the 20th until, uh, um, uh, century, it was an important uh, uh, blot uh, that uh, uh, helped uh, the advancement of the science uh, and uh, above all advancement of the culture of machines that it was a kind uh, a part of a, uh, of a science uh, for no scientist so we have for example um, uh, the idea to have a perpetual machine for the roof, a perpetual machine for the liquid, and so on. But where is, where is the physical describing? Where is the mathematical interpretation? Is it a real science? Is it the foundation of a science that we, come, we can see later with the, the new modern science, for example, with Galileo, Descartes, uh, Newton, and so on? If we, if we, we, we I propose you spots, so uh, my apologize, of course, in be between a century and another century, we have uh, lots of things. But just to say, for example, here, the heritage of Archimedean approach uh, in Tartaglia. Tartaglia is uh, very known for uh, Tartaglia's triangle, for the equation of a third degree, and so on, and so on. But he was very good in statics, in the science of the equilibrium. And this kind of science was uh, science of wage, a little bit different from uh, the mechanics. Science of wage was a science that uh, 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 it was interesting to understand the equilibrium of two bodies in a lever without necessary an implication of a movement. And here we have a frontispiece about a book, Nova Scienza, before Galileo, and the Quay City, uh, where he talk about um, uh, the, this is science of weights. And you can see the science was related with some particular aspect of uh, mechanics, but uh, on um, uh, weapons. Uh, try to understand how we can improve uh, geometrical aspect, the uh, physical aspect of the weapons. And uh, you can see here, for example, uh, a description of a cannon that in some, some way this Aristotelian motor here and after we fall down, he tried to understand effectively what the kind, what the kind of the, um, uh, mathematical desc geometrical describe I can do with this kind uh, of uh, phenomenon. And here, if you see the parabola, of course, he cannot see parabola now, nowadays. We say, of course, we can call second degree, equation, parabola. But he understood that it was not a, a rectiline. It was, it was clear that if I want to put something in on the fortification just over there, I have to measure the distance and I have to, 
take in account that uh, the path is not rectilinear, but something like that. It was part of the experience. But to put together the experience and the mathematical description of what I see was very complicated. The relationship between physics and mathematics and the, the describing of this kind of curve in mathematical um, terms it was complicated at the time. And then here you have another kind of uh, um, um, Archimedean heritage by Tartaglia. He tried to understand a body here, a body here, and if I move this body, maybe I can consider this distance at this distance, and I can calculate in some way the, the, the gravity uh, of a body. Here, a body has more gravity than here, and so, and so on. So he tried geometrically to understand um, uh, the, 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 um, what happened a body along a lever, a body with a different wage, different arm, etc. Of course, we arrive to Galileo, but B Galileo is very known for discourse e dimostrazioni matematiche. Uh, it's very known for the mechanics, very known for the law, about uh, um, the description of uh, a part of a body, a projectile, and so on. But uh, in the opere nazionali, in uh, Galilean works, you can find in volume two, you can find uh, um, a, a two, two short manuscripts unpublished, uh, belonging to the Galilean pupils. They are not uh, uh, a Galilean manuscript. Uh, because uh, he was a teacher of fortification, military fortification, improvement of fortification for some uh, um, situation in some, uh, some period, in that period we have a lot of war, so it was a kind of job uh, to do that, private lesson. So uh, this, this is a, 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 a kind of uh, early science uh, approach to the science by Galileo before the, the really important and the very organized science uh, that he did later in, in um, uh, 1638. And this is the level of, um, uh, the, the, level of the science, the level of the, the mathematical approach to the physical phenomena by Galileo, because he, under, he wanted to understand what happened at cantilever, if I have a wage, and the cantilever has this, this, kind, this kind of a movement. And uh, he was um, uh, interested in the, uh, the, the problem of uh, what, the, what, what happened if, uh, when the cantilever break. Because the cantilever were, very, we were not uh, uh, very big, like in, at Leonardo time. So uh, this is a typical geometrical describe of particular phenomena. Here you can find uh, exactly the relationship between physics and mathematics because we have the geometry and description of physical phenomena. And in other part of the, of the book, uh, he, he, he tried to understand what happened when the wedge uh, is heavy so the cantilever fall down. We have more than 100 mentioned about Archimedes. It was clear it was Archimedean. The approach was Archimedean. The other side, we have an Aristotelian school. Uh, I mean that um, uh, we have uh, people that follow the Aristotelian science. And this is uh, the uh, kind of uh, um, um, epilogue about science and machine. There are two different things, science mechanics, a the culture of machines. I have no rooms to go inside, but just I want to show you that this kind of aspect of the science with the geometry, low lever, it was the base for um, to, to build the science at the time, the mechanics, and the culture of machine. The other side, we have people that we don't know. Uh, they were not uh, scientists. They they didn't know any kind of language, Latin. Latin. Latin was the language of the science, but they arrived to build a running machine. They arrived to build before the, the a theory of a machine that we can consider in the uh, 18th, 19th century, they arrived to build the machine, and we know, we read the many experiences by the world, by the weapons, by the fortification, and so on. Uh, so we have a science of mechanics, the physical part inside the machine that we can consider machineries, 
I mean, in the machine, we have the princip physical principle that, that they, and in this part of the machine, we can consider the relationship between physics and mathematics, not in the machine as a, a totally. And the science of wage is a, a, the early mechanics related only with the equilibrium of two body in a lever, like I told you before. So, this is what, are, what we have, uh, in general speaking, before the, new, the, 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 the birth of the modern science uh, with the Newton. Reading Newton mechanics and uh, Sadiq Arnaud and the thermodynamics, so we arrive at the law, axiom of law of motion. Just you can see that uh, this kind of uh, uh, approach to the science uh, is completely different from what we know nowadays. You know, in the books, we don't have F equal MA, we don't have any, the, 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 the law of gravitation, Newton never wrote the law of gravitation like we read today. But we have some, something like that, okay? And try to now to analyze the science uh, Newton on science from a logical point of view. I try to understand what happened before we go to thermodynamics. I try to understand what kind of, of a parameter, magnitudes, and object we have in these two different um, uh, 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 theories. Is it possible for a young man of a Cole Polytechnique de Paris to build a new theory that, that has nothing to do with the mechanics? If Newton uh, go back, he can see uh, Aristotelian science, Euclidean science, uh, Archimedean science. If Sadiq no go back and build the theory like he did, he cannot use the mechanics. He cannot use any kind of Newton paradigm. So it's important to understand what, what kind of science we, uh, Newton proposed. If we consider, for example, the first law, and we want to analyze it from a, um, a logical point of view. We have the preposition of a principle of inertia, easy. Uh, a body, a complex system constituted by the inertial system, a closed system, a clock, and the result, okay? But if you want to write it in, from a logical point of view, we have to consider that in any situation, in any case, we, have, we can find, in any case, we can find a body that the movie uh, by an absolute time and in, a, uh, in a, an infinite space. Infinite time and infinite space. So, uh, this kind of a principle that is not a mathematic, is not, a, is not possible to measure infinite time, it's not possible to measure absolute uh, um, space and infinite uh, space. Uh, it's difficult to consider this kind of a principle and the second, third law of Newton uh, for, for, for a machine builders. They cannot use this kind of mechanics because they, it's not a, we, we, there's not an application. Then we have just um, uh, 6044. Uh, it's interesting to know that uh, um, another kind of approach, completely different from Newton approach, it was, now we have 60, uh, 60, 44, before we had 60, 87, but uh, the, um, uh, the environment of studies was uh, mechanics, and here you have Torricelli. Torricelli is very known because uh, he helped Galileo to write this course and because uh, he is famous for the barometer and so on. But he was very interesting, very, very um, important for an, a book in Latin um, nowadays uh, too. Uh, the name is Opera Geometrica. It's a book related with the, the geometry and with, an, uh, with the use of the ancient method of geometry in, in uh, mechanics. But what is important that, uh, is in, uh, in this part of, the, uh, of the, um, the 16th century, 17th century, it was important that uh, the scientists take a position. I propose a science following Aristotelian school, I propose a science and I, I as, uh, by Archimedean school. Um, this means that uh, the approach to the science may be the same phenomena change. And here you have Libro 2, Inquibus Archimedes Doctrina, means 
I wrote this book following Archimedes' theory. Clear, it's clear. And he, for example, he uh, tried to uh, prove it um, in 21 different procedures, uh, some uh, theorems. Uh, and uh, 11 by exhaustion method and uh, 10 by uh, indivisibilis. Uh, Torricelli was another genius. It was considered a, a, a new Archimedean of the Renaissance. But it was very complicated to read it, it very, very, because uh, the, 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 uh, the level of the, the, um, the explanation, geometric explanation, is very, very deep. And, but it, was, it is very important for this kind of a part to talk with you because it proposed the, the, what we can consider today the basic of the principle of virtual work in these few, um, few words. Two heavy bodies linked together cannot move by themselves unless their common center of gravity does not descend. This is an important uh, general uh, law that we can, nowadays we can, we can write in this way. And this kind of approach, with this kind of approach, we move it as an ingenious science rather than the Newtonian science, physical science. And nowadays, the principle of vital work is very important for engineering students. This is early. But the problem of the first law of uh, in, uh, the Newton and inertia law was not really only with the, from a logical point of view. It was an important uh, um, aspect of the science. It was, uh, for example, Newton uh, called it law or axioms. He means that we cannot prove it, we cannot uh, do any kind of uh, the demonstration because it's axioms, from Greek axioms, something is the basic of the theory, the principle, we cannot do nothing. Here, the same law, the same content of the law, was called by Euler theorem. That means that we can prove it. We can find a procedure to prove it. D'Alembert, for D'Alembert, he considered the, the law of inertia, the law of composition of the forces, the law of equilibrium as a fundamental theorem of dynamics. So we are moving versus uh, m uh, a part of the, uh, the physical phenomenon where the concept of the force is very important, the cause of the movement in dynamics. And this is interesting, the same because this is a famous criticism by Berkeley to uh, Newton um, fluxions. Uh, Berkeley, very briefly, Berkeley said, this is a, a function, I do derivative of the function. Okay, I don't go inside, I don't want to be bore, boring for you. But just to say, if I do a reasoning, I do an hypothesis. I move, I, I go on in this, pro, in this uh, uh, reasoning, and all of a sudden I change the hypothesis that I did at the first. I arrive at a final conclusion that is not what it is, it is not linked with the, with the first hypothesis because I change it, the hypothesis in the reasoning. So he said, I can do that because I can consider the x different from zero. After, I have this element, this term. And we can say, nowadays, we can say, is, is a, um, in movie, it moves uh, versus zero uh, fastly, uh, faster than this. So this, this can consider very near to zero, so it consider smaller than this one, so I cannot consider it. And this kind of reasoning, this kind of dynamic or intellectual reasoning has nothing to do with the science, because the, the, we have to consider the rigor of mathematics, the rigor of science, and Beckley said there's no rigor here. He accepted the power of analysis infinitesimal by Newton. He accepted uh, all the results by Newton, but he said from a methodological point of view, this reasoning has some problem. Uh, and, in effect, I cannot do 
And now what they, this kind of uh, in criticism, we can call um, the, the theory of the compensation of the errors that Lazare Carnot, the father of Sadi Carnot, uh, wrote and discussed in this book. In this book, mathematical books, that we go later. Uh, in the 18th century, what is very, very important that um, uh, we have an edition of uh, Newton and Principia wrote by two French, um, uh, um, two men of the church. And um, they were very good mathematicians. And I show you here. This is what is only Latin, okay? This is what the, the three lines of the reasoning of Newton. And this is what they need to explain these three lines. So, uh, the, um, no, usually, uh, Newton said, like Apollonius did, but he, he, we, if we go on uh, and we, we, we read the book, we don't find how Apollonius did. Apollonius did. So, this is what a problem. It was a problem. And these are two French um, uh, people go into uh, the um, Newton and science and try to understand it, to explain all uh, three books, Newton and three books. And now we have uh, this uh, treasure in the five volumes. The third volume is uh, divided in two parts, all are read in Latin. And with this kind of a book, we can have uh, more than 60% of uh, Newton explanation. Of course, it's, it's necessary to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, adjust something. But just to have an idea, that until 19th century, Newton and science was not so clear for, 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 for scientists. And they need to explain and to do figures for three lines. We are talking about each book, about 800, 1,000 pages. There are four vol three volumes. The third volume is divided in two tomes. So it's a kind of encyclopedia. Uh, yeah, I wrote some papers on that, and we are uh, with the Paolo Bussotti. We are uh, uh, before 2020, if everything will be okay, we are translating into English these uh, four volumes. Uh, so, uh, what about uh, the uh, epistemological interpretation? What, uh, what about the story and the epistemologists? Uh, uh, what they consider this kind of a path. One of the most important epistemologists and historian, uh, Thomas Kuhn, he wrote The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. Uh, in effect, um, uh, he, he proposed a science that was, a, in effect, a Newtonian science. The paradigm was a Newtonian paradigm with some anomalies, with some revolutions, with some... In, um, um, uh, deviation inside. But you can, I did um, uh, an analysis of the book. You can see, uh, for example, how many examples he did about the chemistry, thermodynamics, mechanics, and so on. So, uh, just to say that, uh, again, um, uh, the role played by thermodynamics and before the chemistry, in this kind of um, Newtonian paradigm, it was not easy to include it. It was not easy to talk about mechanics, and what happened all of a sudden in the 18th century, chemistry and thermodynamics. How can you include these two signs in this paradigm? And what kind of physical, mathematical object they have? And what kind of a logical structure they have? So just to have an idea, you know, for example, if you can consider the main concept of a Newton paradigm into the signs with respect to uh, the chemistry, the, the science just before uh, Sadi Carnot thermodynamics, but it's very important, this kind of science for Sadi Carnot. You have uh, practically the, the most important things, uh, the fluid is phlogistic, caloric, inertial for the mass, gravitational, 
in inertia perpetual, the first principle perpetual. Here you have the impossibility of a perpetual motion. I'm speaking about the last part of, uh, of uh, Newton's researches was considered the concept of affinity uh, in the bit on an early chemistry. So I try to do this kind of uh, um, uh, um, analyze and the comparison. And here, again, on the, we have another kind of science that arrive until the first 20, 20 years of the uh, of, um, uh, uh, 20th century. Uh, this kind of science went on paralleling the science, the culture of a machine, the perpetual motion, the idea to have all the time uh, possibility to build a machine perpetually. And popular science. So we arrive uh, Sadi Carnot, Sadi Carnot, Lazar Carnot. This is uh, the, the, the f page of uh, the Foundation Carnot uh, that uh, we, on, in, in the, on the web you can find it. And um, uh, Gaetan Carnot is um, a man that uh, he lives in uh, Switzerland. Is uh, the, the Carnot family is an important family. Uh, it was important from a political point of view, from a scientist point of view. You, you, I remember you that Sadi Carnot, son of Hippolyte, brother of Sadi Carnot, uh, was the president of the French, uh, um, of the France, in, in a certain period, for a very short period. And uh, uh, Adolf and others uh, were a member of um, uh, important, they, they played an important part of a political um, uh, uh, environment uh, of, um, of the, the France. Um, so I want to thank you very much, Gaetan Carnot, because he gave me many, many uh, photos that I have in my book. Uh, that I wrote with the Charles Gillespie at Princeton University, and um, he so uh, uh, he was um, to study Sadi and Lazar Carnot today was an important part uh, for the science for the compression of this paradigm, this complicated paradigm. So. Uh, this is kind of images, uh, that's an inedit image that they give me. I thank you very much. I thank him very much. So, um, this is uh, uh, Lazar, Lazar Carnot. Uh, he was busy with the two memories, with the two manuscripts for a uh, prize he lost. Coulomb won the prize, Augustin Coulomb. But he wrote Essay sur le machine en général, Géométrie des positions. Principes fondamentaux de l'équilibre du moment, réflexion sur la métaphysique du calcul infinitésimal. Here you have the mechanics in alternative to uh, Newton mechanics. And the idea is to find the efficiency of a machine, a mechanical machine, in any situation. Here you have the static, where we talk about the uh, geometrical movement and so on, say, particular aspect. Here you have the principle of equilibrium and of the movement. So the principle, be on the, uh, principle of the, um, the movement, particularly the mechanics, and the principle of the equilibrium, static. And here you have a book dedicated to the role applied by mathematics that he used in the previous book. He wanted to say that I don't want to use analysis infinitesimal. I don't want to use, the, because it was a debate at the time, uh, some years later, Cauchy wrote some papers to say, to, to, to do what nowadays we call the rigorization of mathematics. Uh, no, we, don't want, uh, we don't want to know what is infinitesimal, what is in, um, this kind of mathematics it has no rigor. So, he wanted to use another kind of mathematics, another kind of approach to the phenomena, and with another kind of mathematics, you can find, you can build a, an alternative to the Newton paradigm. At the same time, look at dates, okay, and look at here, we have the Tratel de Dynamique de D'Alembert, uh, La Mécanique Analytique de Lagrange. So we are in a period where the, 
everybody uh, tried to propose uh, a new science, a new alternative, an advancement, an advancement on the mechanics by a partial dairy, um, uh, um, uh, differential equation uh, that have taken into consideration the vincula constraints. Because uh, Newton mechanics has no friction, has no concept of work, has no concept of energy, and has uh, no concept of a collision, collision theory. In Lazare Carnot, we, co we start to have this kind of new um, um, magnitude, physical magnitude, and uh, of course, uh, uh, the mathematical description. Newton wrote three loads, axiom or law um, of emotion. We saw that D'Alembert wrote theorems. We saw that uh, Euler called theorems, and so on. Seven, uh, D'Alembert and um, uh, uh, Euler uh, wrote uh, many theorems, more than three uh, axioms or law. And Lazare Carnot wrote seven hypotheses. First of all, he called the, the, this kind of not law, not action, but hypothesis. This is, this is important. And the first hypothesis, of course, corresponded to the first law, Newton's law of inertia. In this part, in this book. This is the level of mathematics and the very known, uh, the first uh, law, the law conversation of a kinetic energy for elastic body. Uh, so we, we can have an advancement of the, of the use of the mathematics uh, with respect to Newton that uses a lot of geometry and uh, the calculus. Here we have another kind of level of calculus where we, we related with the two body in collision. But, of course, Lazar was a man of his time, and he has not clear, yet, not clear, the, what is the mass. And he was a little bit uh, with a foot in uh, Descartes' mass, and with a foot in Newton's mass. But it was normal, because at that time, uh, we, have, uh, we have to wage some... Uh, um, some uh, years later, maybe to wait for Mach that describe in some way um, the, uh, the concept of the mass related with the force. The, the law of conservation of total quantity of motion, the law of conservation of total angular moment, there are two very fundamental results that he obtained. Uh, but the, we are talking about the collision, and we are talking about he tried to apply this kind of science to machines. It's not an idealistic uh, science. Uh, we are not talking about a point and the vector, speed, and so on. We are talking about a machine. It was interesting to find the efficiency of a machine with respect to, to another machine. If you want to do another kind of uh, logical analysis like I did before between the first law of Newton and the first hypothesis of uh, Lazare Carnot, we can see the difference. Everybody perseveres in each stage of rest or uniform motion in a red line unless it is completed to change that state by force simplicity uh, theorem. Here we have hypothesis, not the law. Once at the rest, the body cannot move it by itself. Un fois mis en mouvement. If we find the condition that we find a body that for some particular condition is in movement, the, 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 the equilibrium is broken and it starts to move it. So you can see the different approach to the science. And uh, uh, unless it is complete to change that state. So the, 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 the first law of Newton is, in any case, I find a body. In any case, I find a space, an infinite space, an infinite time, I can find a body that is moving. The, if uh, he, he stay here, or, he move, if he, or if it move, he move ad infinitum. 
So does that can no avoid the problem of the infinite non-operative magnitude? How can I measure an infinite magnitude? If I know that the space is infinite, what kind of instrument I have to use to measure? I can't only measure. So I can do a physics without any possibility to measure. The power of results of Newton, they are very important. But we can discuss the methodology to arrive at this kind of result. And it was not uh, something that new. It's not that uh, I discovered nothing of important, because I show you many scholars find it some difficult to read Newton books. Nowadays, the third book of Newton is very complicated. We have many scholars that are very good specialists on the first book of Newton, and particularly on the scolium, a particular part of a Newton book. So if you want to do another kind of analysis between the concept by Newton paradigm mechanics and lazar canoe mechanics, the body are mathematical points. Of course, because it's clear that if I want to use analysis infinitesimal, where each point is a part is something that I can use from mathematical point of view and from physical point of view, so the body is to, should be a point. And the point can be here, here, can become in this position. I can do a point like I want, because uh, it's an Euclidean point. So it's, it, the really dimension of the point is here. Effectively, the point n does not exist. I can, put, I can do the point on table like bigger than I want, is in any case the point. Global machines. The movement is the property of the body, communication of the motion. L'inertia, perpetua, impossibility of perpetual motion. Of course, a machine should be, in any case, based on impossibility of perpetual motion. I cannot have a perpetual machine. It's not a, it's not a good uh, research if I do. Interaction of force cause. Here we have the moment activity, the work. The early work, because we have the concept of work, the really concept of work, we have to wait some years later. Sadi Carnot. Sadi Carnot wrote this book, 1824. Only one book, 180 pages. Without mathematics, you don't find any kind of calculation, just a very short calculation in a footnote from page 73 to page 79. The calculation is uh, unfortunately not correct from a from, uh, uh, mathematical point of view today, but at that time it was important. It was very good. And the other side, he was lucky because with his mistake, he arrived to do a calculation that exactly what we do today but not with the mathematics, but with a kind of concept that we don't have, uh, we, don't, we never met before in the history of science. The concept of a cycle. Normally we have the concept of a cycle uh, and the philosophy, cycle, uh, love, uh, um, life, death, life, or for example, uh, uh, age, love, and so on. But I want to use, imagine that in the 19th century, a called Polytechnique de Paris, where you can find the people like Cauchy, like uh, uh, Poisson, like Laplace, that they, they organize the science that nowadays we use, from mechanics to, uh, to astronomy and so on. And Sadi Carnot wrote a book without the kind of mathematics, nothing. He wrote a book, uh, um, Talk about, he talked about the gas, something that I cannot touch, I, something that uh, was uh, something new. And his book, his uh, concept, uh, were related so much with the chemistry, another kind of uh, um, uh, theory not included in the Newton paradigm. So they are not really, they are, very, they are not uh, uh, the really theories. La, um, Lavoisier was lucky because he wrote a book uh, later on the hit uh, 
uh, with the important scholars. Sadi Carlo was not so um, lucky, but he was lucky after that because um, uh, he had uh, friends that he wanted to uh, emphasize uh, the role of the science by Sadi Carno, and they re re reworked this book from a mathematical point of view. But Albert Einstein said, if you want to know how a theory can be built, and if you want to read a theory that arrived nowadays like he did, and everybody should have this little pocket um, in, in, with, the, with, the, with, with us, uh, this is the book by Sadi Carnot, and Einstein said so. He died very young. Uh, he died uh, 34 years. He was a uh, captain. Uh, he was an important. He played an important part of the war um, uh, to for the for the freedom of the Parisian people uh, during the war, and uh, but he let. Uh, because a call politique is a kind of military engineering school, uh, and uh, so he decided to go out and they went to live in the center of Paris in a very beautiful place, uh, Le Troisième Arrondissement, um, Rue Parc Royal. Nowadays, exists this room. It's a very interesting. The building is the same. I'm trying to do some studying to understand where he lives and where he died because. He, it was, not, it was not clear how and where he died. In effect, I, tr I, I found it where he died. But until uh, past uh, decades, uh, the idea was that he, was, he died um, in Paris for a cholera, for a problem, uh, uh, because at that time, uh, uh, in the same period that he, he died, uh, he... Uh, uh, it was this epidemic. But uh, we find it, the tomb in another part where he was uh, in a clinic for mental problems. But it was not good to tell this because this family was an important family in France. So uh, the uh, a descendant of his family un uh, waged until 19th century before giving to the Academy of Science, all manuscripts by Sadi no all things. It's true that uh, most of the things that he had was burned for the problem of the cholera in Paris. But the, the story is not really clear because we don't have any kind of, of documents on that. In a scholar, uh, in the past century, did this kind of research very deeply and uh, I'm trying to follow in this kind of research. Okay. Uh, this is the manuscript that um, uh, we have at Academy des Sciences. Uh, he, in effect, he published the manuscript Reflexion sur la poisson montu de feu, 1824. But paralleling, uh, it was found uh, another manuscript unpublished, another manuscript unpublished, uh, where he talked about uh, physics, uh, mathematical, uh, um, subjects, and where he, he wrote uh, a general thesis, nothing can be built, nothing be, can be destroyed. Nowadays we use this kind of words, but he, where he wrote this kind of things uh, was not in this published manuscript. It is interesting to see, for example, in this uh, manuscript here, maybe you cannot see, but uh, he, many corrections that he did. Uh, the, the book was uh, uh, Reflexion sur la poisson montée du chaleur, of heat, but he, he deleted it. And he wrote of feu, de, de feu, of fire. Because the fire, uh, chaleur was not clear at that time. Chaleur, caloric, it was a, a debate about that uh, related with the nonsense uh, concept of caloric. This is one of the reasons why his theory considered a wrong theory. It was not so much studied because it's a, a wrong book. And, uh, but he used the word fire that is so much related with the new science in, at that time was born the chemistry. This is the reason why chemodynamics and the chemistry, they are related. 
and they are outside with respect to Newtonian paradigm. Uh, notice not uh, le mathématiques, le physique et autres sujets, where he wrote this general thesis. And uh, in the, if you want to read in the English version of this part and this manuscript, these two manuscripts unpublished, uh, in, 90, in 1986, Robert Fox, an important scholar, Sadi Carnot, a British scholar, uh, translated from French to English with a critical books nowadays, if we can find it, a very, very good book. Uh, we have to thank you, Lazar Hippolyte and uh, Adolphe uh, Carnot, because they, we know about Sadi Carnot, because they wrote some biographical sketch, and, but they give this, some biographical sketch uh, to the Académie des Sciences, only 19th century, because they don't want you to, to, maybe, it's not clear, they don't want to show um, how Sadi Karno died, uh, what, he, what happened. La thermodynamique était fondée. Sadi Karno is the founder of thermodynamics. And Poincaré wrote some lines. Many, many scholars later, Sadiq, uh, after his death, wrote many important notes on Sadi Carnot. This is the Rue du Parc Royal, I told you before. It's interesting to know that Sadiq, this is a, a homework that Sadi Carnot did, I call Polytechnic. This is his signature that uh, nowadays there is in the book, so it's a we, uh, it's possible to read these kind of things. And um, thanks to uh, Ecole Polytechnique, la, uh, the delivery of Ecole Polytechnique, where I uh, found out this manuscript. It was admission. Ecole Polytechnique is considered by X. Uh, 1812, six years old, uh, 1,024 francs. The father paid to let him go on to the school. Uh, here you can see um, another, another particular document that I found uh, in Ecole Polytechnique where we can read again Sadiq Kano, uh, the founder of thermodynamics. And uh, you can see the, some names Poisson, Hachette, Renault, Ternat, Vincent Dessy, uh, Durand. Uh, Petit, um, Fourcy, Legend, Lacroix, Ferry, Doulon, Petit. So he, he had, he had uh, many important professors, examiners, institutors, repetitors. So he was very, very into the mathematics. He was a good scholar. The, the notes were very good. He knew very well the mathematics, but he did use mathematics in his book. There, it's interesting to show that he was an engineer with a physical, uh, with, a, with a, um, an engineer because he was at the Ecole Polytechnique, but with a, um, a, a physical uh, ideas for the new Bern theory of thermodynamics. And here you can see some projects for the I call polytechnic like an engineer related with the hydraulic problems, engineering problems, fortifications, and so on. Another show that I want to share with you this is a very nice letter that his father wrote to Sadi. Uh, Sadi was a, a, he participated in the world to, to, to be free of Paris. And in these uh, lines, he said, my dear Sadi, uh, je, uh, I'm very uh, honored that you are here, to do, you, do, you are part of this uh, uh, liber um, uh, to be free, uh, Paris and so on. Please, when you can, come to visit me in Magdeburg, because for the world, it was in Esilio, in Magdeburg. And um, so very passionate uh, alliance. And uh, this is uh, another uh, image of Sadi Carnot that we don't use to, uh, to see Sadi Carnot uh, in this uh, way with, uh, with air a little bit um, um, different and different, very, very young. 
Uh, now I want to show you rapidly uh, in, an, in an, a logical analysis of uh, Sadiq Arnaud reasoning to understand how is it so different from Newtonian paradigm and, and mechanical paradigms. Uh, first of all, I want to say you that I, I, we try to use a, as a category of investigation uh, um, what we call double negative sentences. Double negative sentences, they are uh, um, sentences that if we want to consider the corresponding positive sentences, double negative sentences is a sentence with do two negation. If I, I delete the two negation, so I have affirmative sentences, can I have again the physical, the scientific content I want to say? It is not true that uh, it is not true that the heat it is not uh, um, uh, work. If I, I want to do affirmative sentences, the work is the hit, I lose a mistake because I have to create a particular condition to say that the hit is effectively the work. I'm speaking about a physical problem. So it's not only a way to speech in some place. We don't know really why Sadiq Arnaud, he had other scholars, because I did studies with other scholars in different periods, use this kind of way to approach to the science double negative sentences. It's not only French language, I find it in English language and so on. Uh, so it's interesting to show that all the time, uh, each time that uh, we find it double negative sentences, we don't have a mathematical approach of the theory. We have a theory without mathematics. Differently, when we have uh, a strong mathematical approach, a strong analysis, a strong um, uh, differential equation, etc., we don't have double negative sentences. This is an important result. So if we consider double negative sentences as a KO investigation, we can reconstruct the, the reasoning of Sadiq Carnot in this way uh, using only uh, the double negative sentences. So what we arrived to do to find the 65 double negative sentences and the respect these this, this, with these this 65 double negative sentences we, risk, we, we have reconstructed exactly the Sadiq Carnot thought. No, no, a eh does not mean a. This is the double negative sentences. And we are, not, uh, we are not interested to build a new logical theory. We are not logicists. Uh, we know the logics, but uh, well, in effect, we use uh, the logic as a category of investigation, a category, historical category of investigation. So we try to pass from historical facts to epistemological interpretation by particular category of investigation. That's the logic. But we don't want to use we don't want to clear a new logical theory. We just use the, the, the terms, logical terms. Uh, of course, just to show you that, generally speaking, we have the three kinds of principles in logics. The principle of non-contradiction, the principle of tertium non datur, the principle of identity. When we, we, we have the uh, double negative sentences, we lose the principle of tertium non datur. And we pass from a classical logic a non-classical logic, general speaking. So we can say, general speaking, without do any kind of uh, logical theory I told you before, we can consider the logical thought, logical reasoning of Sadiq Arnaud belongs to a non-classical logic, general speaking. Uh, so. If we uh, analyze from a logical point of view Sadiq Arnaud books, 118 pages, very small book, very, uh, very few pages, we find what is the main problem of Sadiq Arnaud? What do you want to write in this book without any kind of mathematics? Is the efficiency of heat machine bounded? We find different tendencies. Ku Heat and uh, um, what is the relation between uh, heat and the work? It's a very, very crucial question. It's a phys theoretical physics question. Because 
uh, at that time, it was, it was not clear what was the work, what was the hit. Of sure, we have uh, many experiences by Jules, uh, etc. Uh, but how can put together hit and uh, work in a mathematical formula? There are two magnitudes. I know in some way what is the work, what is the um, thermal, thermodynamic works, and, but how can put that together? And above all, how can calculate the, the maximum job, the maximum work that I can do with a certain quantity of heat? And what about the temperature? So how can put together temperature, work, and heat? Can I do it in the same formula? And at the same time, what are the new parameters, the magnitudes of this new theory? Pressure, volumes, temperature. So we can imagine that to build a new theory in, two, three, in more than three years, like it did, uh, it was complicated. And uh, what I told you before about the, the chemistry, it's interesting because Sadi Carnot, in his book, used two words, caloric and chaleur et calorique. And sometime, someone considered, said, maybe Sadiq Carnot wrote about caloric, on the, caloric is a wrong term, but uh, chaleur maybe means entropy, nothing to do. Sadiq Carnot never wrote about entropy, never wrote about the first principle of thermodynamics. He wrote essentially in the focus on the cycle and the second principle of thermodynamic. Uh, but he used the two terms. Because before, he is the page of uh, Traité élémentaire de chimie, the page of uh, um, Lavoisier. Lavoisier, before Sadi Carnot, already defined what is caloric, what is caloric combined, what is color chaleur. So it was clear for a new savant, for a new scientist, young scientist like Sadi, Sadi Carnot, to build the theory, and it was not necessary to rework the concept of, of, of a chaleur or caloric, because already Lavoisier defined it. For example, if I want to use the word force in 19th century, it's not necessary to say force like Newton said, because it's clear. And if, in effect, I analyzed the book and I found it what, what, where we said one thing quantity of, of a chaleur, but he wanted to say quantity of caloric. From a logical point of view, this helped me to understand where he wrong, used the wrong term um, to say chaleur and not caloric and vice. Um, <clears throat> here, here in the appendix of the book, uh, you can find the 65 double negative sentences in the original language, but in the bracket you can see the English explanation. It's important to, to rest on the, on, to, to, to focus on the original language because we have to analyze the co scientific content. So I cannot analyze a translation. It's necessary to analyze original language. In any way, we have problems, no axiom, no principles, and we find a very interesting biological point of view Cycle, it is not the cycle, Sadiq Arnaud cycle that I show you that Cleperon did, but we find the cycles of arguings. And here we, we can consider the role play, the list of possible roles played by a double negal sentences. We, can con we considered a problem, fundamental problem of theory, a general principle, general principle of theoretical physics or mathematics. They are not the principle like in Aristotelian science or in Newtonian science. Theoretical premise, ad absurdum proof, another thing very important. It's not accepted that in a, a scientist in the 19th century organized a demonstration, a proof, using ad absurdum proof. It was something ancient, something related with the ancient geometry. So this is another reason why the book were considered is not a, a modern book in the 19th century. Uh, and the operative principle. So with this kind of roles, 
And with, this, with the logics, we find out the, the, the logical thought of Sadiq Carnot in the 65 double negative sentences. And we organized this kind of a diagram to say that with this problem, here we have the number of the sentences, of course, if, if we need the, the appendix with the books to see what the kind of the sentence, but uh, please believe me. And uh, we have the problems, with the problems we arrive at the general principle of the physics, the theoretical premise, methodological principle, and absurdum proofs. You, just, you can see how many absurdum proofs is a theorem. To, to prove the second law of thermodynamics is based on an absurdum proof. No analytical demonstration. Eh, in the end, gas theory. This is the mathematical... We try to understand the level of mathematical. I told you that we don't find the mathematics, just in the footnote. So, from the principle of the theory, uh, he tried to understand the relationship between a gas when the volume is zero. If the volume is zero, we have no work. Because from a mathematical point of view, the work is the product between the pressure and the volume. If the volume is zero, zero per a number is zero, so I don't have work. So he tried to understand this kind of a consideration. And here you have six, six cycle arguing. What is interesting that there are the six cycles of arguing to build this new theory started with the problem and end with the methodological um, principle. All the time. The cycle of reasoning. Of course, this is an epistemological interpretation a posteriori that is based on the key of investigation, of the use of logic. So, uh, we try to understand what he wants you to say from a logical point of view, but it is clear that it is an epistemological interpretation. Um, and um, we really don't know what we had in the head, in the mind. So uh, we cannot say more with respect to what he wrote. If you want to do an hypothesis, it's an historical hypothesis like I did before. If you want to say, if you want to say something more using a, part, a precise category of investigation, we can do an epistemological investigation. But it, 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 it's clear that this is an epistemological interpretation. It's not Sadiq Carnot. It's an epistemological interpretation of a Sadiq Carnot thought. But it's very near, very behind what he said. Because it's logical. The care of investigation is logics. This is what, he's, what he, he tried to do, the cycle, Sadiq Arnaud cycle. Nowadays we call Sadiq Arnaud cycle, but in effect uh, it's a Clepheron cycle, I told you before. We know this nowadays, in the book, physics books we have this, not this. This is the last page of the book, uh, um, 118. And the two years later, when... He, Sadiq Arnaud died at uh, 1832. Two years later, his friend Clepheron tried to do an analytical mathematical interpretation of a Sadiq Arnaud book, unfortunately without uh, mathematics, so it was not uh, compressible for, for, for scientists. And <clears throat> now we know what the Sadiq Arnaud cycle, we know two isotherms, two adiabatics, because uh, fortunately, if we, we we have a frigo, we have a, we have a car, we have a, um, term, a thermal pumps, and so on. We can take the water from the mines, thanks to second law of thermodynamics, and thanks to Klaus Kelvin, that later, um, after Sadiq Arnaud reorganized the theory of Sadiq Arnaud, again, from a mathematical point of view, and nowadays we study um, the, 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 um, the sentences like Klaus and Kelvin uh, proposed in, his, uh, uh, in their books. This is the problem of Sadiq Arnaud from a mathematical point of view. It's a problem, uh, uh, what, is the kind, what is the efficiency of a machine? But, uh, and this is... Uh, uh, interesting, this is the last part of the footnote I told you before, because I told you before, fortunately, he arrived a good and the right result. Because fortunately, nowadays, when we want to calculate the maximum efficiency of a machine based on this kind of a cycle, the work uh, done by 
to adiabatic transformation is zero. So what is important is the difference of the temperature. And Sadi Carnot, with the wrong, using a wrong calculation, used a, a exactly reasoning, fortunately. And uh, <clears throat> so the problem I told you before, it was, a, it was a difficult to understand this kind of relation. How can put together work and heat? Work on heat, work product with, with heat, it was not clear to do that. Uh, this is the, uh, now we enter in the what we can say, this, uh, the, the main part of the book, that the, this is a filial, fi, uh, this, uh, um, a filial scientific project. Lazar Cano, here we have the books and the, the two manuscripts, the main books of Lazar Cano, and the manuscript and the book of Sadi Cano. With Charles Gillespie, that he uh, passed uh, 2015, Charles Gillespie is, he was, I think he's again in the year, uh, the father of uh, history of science and uh, the historian of science that nowadays are alive, uh, Princeton University, and uh, uh, we wrote this book together. When we wrote the book together, he, he was published the book when he was. Uh, uh, 97. The book uh, we published the book uh, 2014. It died um, 2015 without any problems. Uh, so I want to show you who wrote with me the book. So uh, your uh, citizen, American, and um, so. Uh, and uh, uh, Gillespie wrote, uh, he did a research and arrived to publish the, a book on Lazar Carnot in 1971. I was one year, when, one year old when he wrote the book. He wrote this book. And so later we have uh, this kind of, in, uh, in the Paris was a commemoration of uh, Sadi Carnot thermodynamics and he in this book you can have uh, all uh, 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 very important uh, studies on Sadika no thermodynamics. After this book on Sadika no thermodynamics, we have uh, some some uh, papers on Sadika no thermodynamics. Not uh, and later we have this kind of books and this kind of Lazar. The main idea uh, that uh, my uh, idea, Charles and I, that uh, Sadi Carnot uh, wrote this book uh, in a few years, but it was a project proposed by his father. Uh, his father proposed to him this project to one from mechanical machines to heat machines. The idea was to arrive to understand machines en général, means that we want to know the efficiency of a machine, how we calculate the efficiency of a machine, both mechanical machines and heat machines. My son, I did mechanical machines, please you do uh, heat machines. This is a part of the study I did. It is a square, it, uh, it is a painting that you can apply to that. What we did with Charles Gillespie, we took each part, we read contemporary this book and three books, these books and three books, these books and three books and, book and three manuscripts. We read, we analyze a corresponding to understand where and how the two Carnots said the same thing, the same approach, the same words, the same approach to build, to build the theory, to arrive to, hypo, to do an historical hypothesis, strong historical hypothesis, that his father passed to him this uh, manuscript and he went to, uh, went to go, went um, and he go inside, went inside um, to start <coughs> his new theory. Uh, so this is the, 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 just the, the, the second part of the book where you can find all the bibliographic if you want, if you are interested to understand uh, effectively where the two Carnot's speech about the same things, uh, about the same assumption. Uh, we stressed so much the bibliography. It was a very hard job on that. And for example, we uh, try to understand the common use of non-sophisticated mathematics, no difference equation, no idealization, um, uh, uncommon way of a concept of vincular work, production of work. 
Again, I don't go inside these things because... But uh, just to say that the, um, the common use of physical mathematical quantity, the common use of considered efficiency, um, again, the, how they build the theory from the principle uh, to the final remarks on scientific theories. A physical system for, for hydraulic machine by Lazar, a physical system in the same way to produce for a Carnot heat machine. Uh, the cycle, Sadi Carnot produces a cycle not directly in the four phases, now, like we, nowadays we say, but in, in a step by step. Uh, I go f uh, rapidly. This is interesting to show you that uh, maybe the cycle, this is uh, not a really historical hypothesis, but uh, is a conjecture. We think that uh, uh, when Volta uh, presented his uh, Pila to Napoleon, uh, Lazar Carnot was there and passed this idea of a cycle to his son, because we don't have the concept of cycle before Sadi Carnot thermodynamics. Uh, it is in the, I will find, just to, find, to conclude to say that uh, the, the work is in progress because I find out um, translation, three examples of nine letters of, uh, between Leibniz and Arnaud in Sadi Carnot dossier. Why we have Leibniz uh, uh, studies in Sadi Carnot dossier? Carnot, Lazar Carnot was, a, was a, a follower of Leibniz, but we have a translation in Sadi Carnot dossier. Uh, this is a problem about, I told you before, but the, uh, the death of Sadi Carnot. I went, uh, I, the, um, I did a deep research in an archive in Paris, and uh, all the time I tried to see where Sadi Carnot uh, uh, lived. I find a page, no page. Someone break the page. Just maybe they don't want to know where he lived. I don't know. It's a work in progress. Uh, but, uh, but in 1974, already someone, Birembo, uh, hypo hypothesized that Sadikono died uh, not for cholera and so on. He found the manuscript. So we have a change of dialect from a Newton paradigm, from Lazar Carnot to Sadik Carnot. And here you can see the same concept, very different from the uh, Newton concept. Thank you very much. Sorry for my English. So I know it was all totally clear, and uh, you guys had no questions. So, anyway, uh, oh, you have one right off? Okay, go ahead. I had some ideas too, but go ahead. So, forgive me. Um, if Kano had been very well known and very popular in his time, rather than uh, Newton, what would be different? When you talk about Lazar or Sadi? Either. If, if their work had been driving the, the laws that were being created in the physics community, would we have ended up at the same place? Would we have got there quicker, slower? What would have been different? Uh, if I understand the world, what you want to say, uh, you, want, you ask yourself why they were not so popular yeah. in the end. And if they had been, if, if they had been more if had been popular, would we have gotten to where we are today quicker? Yeah. Uh, in effect, uh, the, uh, the, one of the problems was that uh, Lazar Carnot uh, became uh, a, a man not so popular from a political point of view. And uh, automatically his son uh, becoming not so popular. Again, with a book without mathematics, uh, we have to discover Sadi Carnot thermodynamics some centuries later. And the same for Lazier Carnot, because it was not so clear at the time to say that, hey, I have an alternative for uh, Newton mechanics. The same period, Lagrange wrote uh, mechanic analytic, very important, a strong uh, document for the physicist 
and for the application of mechanics in other uh, studies, electromagnetism, uh, corporal studies, so on. So they produced something very important, but the contest was not uh, adequate, accepted not so easily uh, this new intellectual effort uh, because it was too much. Too much to say, okay, we can, we can organize the mechanics in another way. Too much to say, we, now we have a thermodynamics, so we can study, um, we can study machines. Machines, they were not uh, science. Yeah. Uh, we were not considered the science. Yeah. We consider something for the, for, for the, for, for the society. Uh, so uh, they were not uh, the level of the construction of the theory. We have a theory of machineries in the end of 19th century. Uh, so we, at that time, and between Sadi and Lazare, uh, the, 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 the historical context was not uh, uh, happy for them. Let me, let me just, because in his book he talks about what I really liked is this, <clears throat> aside for the double negative thing, which I think is brilliant, but the, uh, <clears throat> at the time of writing is, is you have two things going on, is the investigations of thermodynamics and axiomatic systems, okay? So uh, the, the, uh, the university people, they really like, they're very much into the mathematics and in, they like axiomatics. I mean, he goes AO and PO, okay? Axiomatic organization and problematic organization. And, and it was, there was a dominance, what they were really excited about at the time was, oh, I can axiomatize it, you know, oh, br brilliant, you know, and they were really, really excited about that because it allowed you to do certain calculations and the mathematics and they all loved that. So what was going on in thermodynamics itself and with machines was not something that these people were really, you know, involved in so much. So it's kind of hard to say what if you know, they, they had been more popular because it's like, it's sort of like nowadays we were talking about why aren't, uh, why isn't the university organized around engineering rather than science, okay? It was the same problem. You watch the, the program, what is it, the Big Bang Theory? The joke is, you know, you go to MIT and you see a three-story building, the scientists are at the top, the mathematicians are in the second place and the engineers are in the bottom. So in the sense you're saying, well, what if it would be in the other way? It's a good question, but I think it's because the engineer, the uh, thermodynamics is, is really coming out, is, is out of uh, uh, engineering in a way. Uh, but it, it has much bigger things too. It goes into all sorts of stuff. Anyway, lots of good stuff. You have a question? Yeah, go. Yes, um, you, you mentioned that not a great deal is known about the mental state of this family. Uh, uh, who, who was Dick was? was he? A I'm sorry, I don't understand. Um, uh, you Speak up. Can, can you hear better now? There was a person you spoke of somewhere towards the latter half of your lecture. Uh, his first name was Nicholas. Um, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Nicholas Carnot? Was there a Nicholas, Nicholas Carnot? Carnot? Uh, uh, easy, this, easy. Uh, Sadi, Nicholas, Leonard Carnot. He's asking about, he's a psychiatrist. He's, relation, the relationship he's, he's a Sadi. psychiatrist. He's asking about the mental question with Saudi. Yeah. He's yeah. saying, what about the family? Was there a yeah. mental history in the family? Yeah, I'll, I'll try to complete. Uh, first, an observation. Uh, uh, I'm an I am a psychiatrist, but a rather unusual one because I have also a degree in physics. And um, I come from the era which would be called the, the, the Boys of October, the Rocket Boys, which was around the time of the launching of Sputnik. So uh, all myself and all my friends went to engineering schools. We all agreed on one thing, and that is that thermodynamics was a black art. <laughs> it was extremely difficult, abstract, yeah. and we swore over many glasses of beer, we would never set foot in a room where the word thermodynamics was uttered again. <laughs> You're right. Mem memory fades. Yes. So that's my background. But um, uh, a number of things about a number of things about your lecture are very interesting. Uh, I would observe that Boltzmann, the the major principle of statistical me mechanics, ended his life. Uh, and so I'm very curious about the mental characteristics of this family as well. Un unrelated to that specifically. 
these, um, the, the graphics you showed, the, the documents, uh, th those are beautiful. How did you get them? Maybe that's an easier question. Well, let's, let's go with that one. How did you get these, all this, these documents, the photographs of them? Terry, you would probably so, yeah. say so, question, question. so the second question is, he really likes all the documents you have. And it's like, how did you come up with all these? Yeah. Uh, uh, a lot of work in libraries, uh, yeah. We can say we wake up in the early morning and uh, go to sleep very, very late in the last 20 years because um, I went around in the libraries from France, uh, from England, uh, in Italy to find documents. It was not easy. Sometimes, for example, documents from Académie des Sciences, I bought because uh, it's you need to vote if you want to ad advance the research. Other documents I find on the Google Books, uh, fortunately, other documents from Ecole Polytechnique, but uh, it was a, a long period, 20 years, to study these kind of things. And uh, let me say that, uh, um, uh, yes, it, like any kind of research, there is Air Force to do. But you arrive and you say that thermodynamics uh, is very complicated. Uh, because he has no mathematics. Uh, and if you consider the classical thermodynamics in the physics books, you do the mechanics, uh, statics. After you arrive to thermodynamics, you do this, the sadi Carnot cycle, and after you start the theory of gas. With the Newton approach, with the concept of the force, with many mathematics, it's easy to understand when you have these kind of things. But if you, under, if you want to understand that a cycle, all of a sudden, in the physics, arrive the cycle, and the cycle produce the work. First of all, the diagram of Clepeyron, two isotherm, two adiabatic, is not a Descartes diagram. In a Descartes diagram, you, each point is a function on the on the x. I mean that each point you, you have a function and the value of the of the point in this function. In the diagram of Kerperon, it's not a diagram, diagram. It's not a metric. It's just a, a design. So you can imagine you have to build a running machine with a design. And uh, uh, I teach for many years uh, uh, physics, mathematics, so on. So uh, when I arrived to thermodynamics, uh, I use it to talk to t to to say to my my pupils, my students. We read now Sadiq Arno book and after we, we read the physics books. Because uh, it was not mathematics, but in the, this kind of book, you can have an idea how he arrived to do thermodynamics. I, I can't help but ask, do you ever use statistical mechanics to explain thermodynamics? If, uh, the, the, the do, you, is it, do you personally ever use statistical mechanics to explain thermodynamics? No. No, no, no. Uh, I'm a theoretical physicist, and uh, statistical mechanics is, is interesting, but it's a, it's a mechanical approach to thermodynamics uh, with a, a new kind of mathematics as a probability. So, uh, it's a com it's a, from a, a certain point of view, is easier because you know what is the probability, you know what is the mechanical approach to the gas, to, to understand the matter. So it's easier than thermodynamic that you have new parameters for a machine, for an efficiency, ideal efficiency, uh, and thanks to Boltzmann and others, we have uh, we arrived to black box theory and so on. I see. So, so I was going to say one other thing. So uh, I, I, I've been talking to Raphael about this for some time, and I, whether he is warming to the idea or not, but there's a lot of relation. There's a very important relationship between. Uh, the Carnot thermodynamics and quantum theory, okay? And uh, for a long time, I didn't think about quantum theory as being a theory of thermodynamics, but you go back and Planck and black body radiation was all about thermodynamics. And, and, and Planck originally thought he really didn't like Boltzmann and he really set out to refute Boltzmann, but then he came up and he realized he had to use uh, statistics and units of some sort. So he said, oh, I guess Boltzmann's right. But, it, but but Planck screwed up because he wasn't talking about uh, uh, particles anymore. He was talking about quanta, and the quanta are not particles. And so his whole, his whole mathematics is different. But the people who are using statistical mechanics 
to, you know, and Boltzmann to explain thermodynamics, I think they're missing a lot of this. Anyway, it's a whole mess. The thing's still currently a mess. And I think the reason that, uh, well, anyway, I'm going to go on and on. I think one of the coolest things that I found in this, I mean, this, this book is just a beautiful book. And I would say, you know, uh, 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 Joe, you're asking about all these documents. This is a real historian, okay? This guy, Doug, he went to Carnot's family and said, what do you got? Okay, and go back through the documents. And they respected him and they showed him stuff and gave him stuff. And he has things and he, uh, just like, where did he live? He digs and he digs and he digs. And that's really a good, the good historian. And he goes to all these obscure document places and he finds out and he buys them and he, and he you know, tracks him down. This is really, really good. I mean, this is the best history of physics, history of science book that I've ever read in my entire life. And it's fantastic stuff. And he goes through and it's like, one of the, just out of nowhere, this double negatives thing. What do you mean 65 double negatives? What the hell is that all about? And he told me this stuff, and I'm going like, uh, so in quantum theory, you know, you have particles and you have waves. So he's like, it's not true that there aren't particles. Okay? It's not true that there aren't waves. Okay, this is a way in my, so my little interpretation of this is this is, is, is beyond objectivity anymore. So I was like, no, the universe isn't, one, isn't just part of, made up of particles. It isn't just made up of waves. So how do you say that? Say, well, it's, it's, not, that the, it's not that there aren't particles. <laughs> it's not that there aren't waves. Okay, so you're getting those, to me, those double negatives are built into a, a, a kind of a complementarity of ways of looking at things. But that's my, that's my interpretation of double negatives. But I mean, there's all this logic. There's a whole bunch of stuff that I used to go through in grad school about, about what they call quantum logic. So the, the reasoning in quantum theory is, is very, very different. Now, whether these are going to connect, I don't know. I mean, it's a very interesting idea. Is, is, is uh, this double negative stuff and the, and the uh, abs uh, absurdum arguments and so forth that you see so much in, in, uh, in Carnot, that's... that's reminiscent of a lot of this quantum logic stuff they're talking about. I'm, I'm inclined to think they're very closely related, but we'll see. Anyway, any other questions? We've run a little long here, but we're good? All right. I recommend this. Thank you for the questions. <laughs>